Hi guys, welcome to our book club. Today we will start the second book of this year, 2023, which is called The Vegetarian by Han Kang. And well, it is a psychological novel where we know that it's about a woman who starts having, you know, like strange dreams. So let's just begin. Hi again, as I was commented to you, today we will start a new book, which is called The Vegetarian written by Han Kang, which is a um, Korean writer who is also a journalist. This novel is one of the first uh, of her novels, which is translated into English. And um, as far as we know, this is the story of a girl who is having these very, very weird and bloody dreams related with meat. So she decided to stop eating. And well, the story begins um, by the description of her husband you know her husband is called chong if i'm not mistaken and this guy is describing uh his relationship with his girl his wife he says that his wife is just you know like very normal she's not special in any sense she i'm sorry he is describing that in the time they know each other that she was just you know like totally normal not pretty, not ugly, you know, her hair was not long, not short, she was just normal, nothing special. And well, this guy is telling us how the um, interaction or the dynamic with her, with his wife is. He says that um, they have been married for five years, and in those five years, she is very, well, she's not problematic or she is not you know like doing anything in, special in order to get mad her husband he is explaining that she prepares food that she has a she has a hobby she likes reading books so that's why almost all the time she is in her room reading books also he doesn't mention anything about no, any other thing. That's it. She is normal. However, one day, um, well, in the early morning, uh, he says that one day he just, you know, like stood up because he was thirsty. He wanted uh, like something to drink. He goes to the kitchen and suddenly he saw his wife who was just standing with a very, very weird look in front of the fridge. He tries to call her. He tries, you know, like uh, to got, to got her attention. But at the end, she was just, you know, like very serious. She doesn't say anything. And um, well, at the end, you know, she the only thing she said is that she had a dream. That's it. Next day in the morning, you know, as soon as the husband just wakes up and everything, she goes to the kitchen and she sees that uh, his wife is just, you know, like putting everything outside the fridge. She's putting everything in black bags. And well, he realizes that it's a meat, that she's trying to throw away all the meat in the fridge. But suddenly uh, when he is trying, you know, to, to, to tell her something, her his phone rang and he answered and it's already late so he needs to go to his office as fast as he he could he arrives you know to his office and he says that something weird is happening he never um like arrives early to his home but that day he arrives earlier in order just you know like to come from his wife but as soon as he arrived to his house, he just realized that his wife prepared like a soup and um, nothing else. So um, he is trying, you know, to have a conversation, but he's also tired. So he just asking, like, just give me something to eat. But, you know, uh, the attitude of the wife is a little bit like very cold. So um, she explained her husband that he's never in the house he just you know eating breakfast so nothing happens if you don't eat meat in one meal so that's why you know 
um like the this husband is like well she's trying to be a vegetarian so maybe you know it's happening something weird but not so weird because you know everything began because of that dream and also you know well he says that well maybe she wants to lose weight maybe she is sick or something but also he's trying to convince himself that nothing is happening still he's uh or he he begins to be worried because he says that uh his wife is losing a lot of weight so at some point you know her cheekbones they are very uh prominent and also she looks pale and well, he started explaining that there are some um, like problems in, in their relationship. For example, the, he mentioned sex, that in the past, you know, there wasn't anything special about it, but now like she doesn't want to touch him or she's like rejecting him every time he's trying, you know, to be like a little bit um, lovely with her. So in one of the scenes, we saw that uh, the, the, the husband is confronting his wife and he asked her, like, what is happening with you? Like, what do you, don't you want to touch me? And she said, like, you smell like meat. He mentioned that he just took a shower. So like, how come? But she mentions as well that, you know, like um, inside of him, you know, like, his inside smell uh, like meat. For example, when we sweat, you know, our sweat also has like a smell. So she says that he smells like meat. So that's why he doesn't want to touch it. And well, at the moment, you know, the husband is trying you know, to let her be, not to be so crazy about it until something happened. Um, oh, well, yeah. When he is describing, you know, this relationship and everything, he mentions a, not an important fact, but she mentioned, I'm sorry, he mentioned that she doesn't like wearing bras. Um, the only reason the, the wife is giving him is just that they are very uncomfortable. So that's it. So... Saying that, you know, the, 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 the situation that happened is that the husband is invited by his boss to a restaurant. I think it is like a Chinese Japanese restaurant, a Chinese Korean restaurant, something like that. But, you know, they go. And um, before, before leaving their house, the husband is realizing that, you know, his wife looks very pale and she, I mean, she doesn't look like in the past. She is very, with no color in her face, like very thin. So she looks like sick. Either way, you know, he's trying to do his best. They arrive to the restaurant. They start like drinking everybody and they just sat down to the table. So as soon as the waiter started, you know, like bringing food and everything, she, oh, when the, the, the wives, which name is, whose name, sorry, is like Hyun, Hyun Jun or something like that. She just says like, I don't, I don't want to eat. I don't like meat. I don't eat meat. So thank you so much. So the conversation in the table, let's start, um, let's start about the, about being vegan, vegan, sorry about veganism so they said that when it is or when you stop eating meat because of your health or because you are allergic to some um to some elements or because you know like there is something in your body it's okay but they also start discussing that when you feel that it is just like a savage and a wild action to do and also because you want to help the planet and moreover, even if it is trending, so that will be awkward and uncomfortable for them because they really enjoy eating meat. Um, they continue, you know, like discussing in the table a little bit about being vegan, but, you know, uh, the, the, the wife is not saying anything. At the almost at the end of the dinner, you know, there are some fruit. She ate some fruit and this and that. 
and the boss's, I'm mean, sorry, and the boss, yeah, the boss's wife asked her like, hey, but aren't you hungry? You didn't eat uh, anything, just, you know, like a little piece of, of fruit and a little bit of kimchi, which is just, you know, like a, like a Korean sauce. And well, she's not very talkative. So the, the the boss's wife started feeling like a little bit awkward because she is not saying anything back. And then suddenly they ask her like, hey, why are you vegan? And she said, I had a dream. So in order not to be so embarrassed, uh, her husband started um, telling the rest of the, the guests like, oh no, it's just because, you know, she had some... Uh, stomach problems in the past and right now she is not eating meat in order you know to help her so they accept that answer but they you know like they start putting like a limit like a barrier because they start you know like treating them a little bit uh cool so um, he says that, you know, uh, oh, yeah, something happened during that dinner as well. As I commented to you, you know, this, this girl um, doesn't like wearing bras. So right now, well, she is losing a lot of weight. And her husband mentioned that during the dinner, she just decided not to wear a bra. So there are some weird looks that they are, you know, like giving her like why she's not using a bra. But her husband just decided to act normal, as natural as possible. But there was a point where, you know, it wasn't possible anymore. So at the end of the dinner, they just arrived at their house. He, you know, her husband started, you know, like thinking that probably there is something wrong with her. But he doesn't want to believe that she's really sick. It is just probably like a, like a stage or something. So that's it. When suddenly, you know, the phone rang, or well, rang, and he pick up, and he's um, his mother-in-law. So the girl's mother, that I'm pretty sure is like Hugh John, Hugh, I don't remember the name, let you check it later on. But, you know, it's her mom. So um, her husband is just like, yeah, everything is, you know, like, excellent here, but your daughter just, you know, like stop eating meat and she looks like if she were sick. So her mom started getting worried and she said like, oh yeah, you know, like let me, let me talk with her. But at the moment, you know, she, I mean, she couldn't. So her husband started thinking like, well, maybe it's a good idea to tell everybody. So he also called her sister-in-law. And he is just about to call her brother-in-law, but he decided that it's too much. So uh, they, you know, continue with this interaction, like not eating meat, not nothing. And uh, the chapter, or this time the, the, the page is finished, when um, Mr. Chunk, you know, the husband says that they will attend to a family meeting in a couple of days. And there they will like confront his wife in order to ask her like what is happening why she doesn't want to eat meat anymore so let's see what happened next time until now i think that the lecture i mean the, the reading it has been very interesting there are some parts where you know this lady is describing her dreams the very first dream that she had it was um she was like in a forest, but everything was kind of um, like reddish in her dream. And she suddenly found like a barn where she decides to enter, but everything is like covered by meat, by blood. Her, her clothes are, you know, like blood soaked. So, you know, like over that, She's describing that yeah, the smell and the taste that she needed to eat something. She describes that she likes the, the, the flavor at the beginning, but the sensation and the feelings and everything else, it's not correct. And also she started, you know, like, mm, 
like feeling she did something she shouldn't in that barn because she's trying to escape from there. When she escapes, she start or she realizes that, that she is surrounded by people who are having like a picnic, you know, like Arnita Sada and stuff like that. She likes the smell, but the sensation. And she also has, you know, like this feeling that she did something she shouldn't in that barn. So that is the first dream. I think that she's having like two dreams in this in this uh, chapter, but the next um, dream that she has, well, she explained that she has uh, nightmares of this kind of dreams like very often. That's why she's not sleeping well. However, we just realized that the author is, you know, like describing her dreams twice, if I'm not mistaken. The second dream she has, it's about. Um, I think like uh like someone is being killed because she like feels how the bar is just you know like hitting the head of someone and she also mentions like a swimming pool full of blood where she could see the face of someone. She doesn't mention the face of who at least not yet but she mentioned that she saw a face inside, you know, this uh, swimming pool full of blood. And that's why she's a little bit scared of that and just decided to stop eating meat. So, so far, the story is getting, you know, like, it's getting good. It's getting to that point when we will see what is happening. It's just the introduction. But I think that it's an excellent story. Um, so far, I think that maybe the girl is developing like a, like a mental disease because I guess it's not so normal having those dreams and then stopping eating meat with no reason. And uh, also we can see that this new diet is affecting her body and probably it will affect her health. So let's see what happened. At the moment, it is good. So. Let's just begin with our vocabulary review because as far as we know, since it is a new book and it is a new kind of um, reading, we know that there will be a lot of new vocabulary, but it's just at the beginning. So give me a moment. Let me just continue and share my screen so we can, you know, like start with the vocabulary. So just allow me a moment. So here we are, and as you may see, I'm sharing my screen already. So let's just begin. As you may see, this is just the very first part, which is called the vegetarian. Chapters are called like in different ways. So this one is the vegetarian. So we saw here that, you know, the husband is describing his wife. Well, before they were, you know, husband and wife. So he says, before my wife turned vegetarian, I always thought of her as completely unremarkable in every way. So she was not special at all. You know, it is describing that, for example, it says, uh, to be frank, the first time I met her, I wasn't even attracted to her. Middling hay, no short, no tall. Bob hair, neither long nor short. Bob is just, you know, like Dora's haircut. So something like that, you know, it is not short, it's not long, it was just, you know, like medium size. And then it says, jaundice, sickling look. So jaundice, we start, you know, with the vocabulary. And this first word means, um, it says, uh, well, jaundice, it means ictericia, ictericia, but it is, you know, like yellowish. Like she looks sick and sickly looking. Well, you know, like sick looking. So she is like yellow instead of being pink or saying instead of being tan or something, she looks yellow. That's it. It's a somehow somewhat prominent cheekbones. Those are the cheekbones. Her timid, sallow aspect. Sallow, it will be the same thing as pale, you know, white. No color, 
okay? So it says, as Mike told me, I needed to know. Let's just continue, and then it says, and that walk of hers, you know, the way she walk, neither fast nor slow, striding nor mincing. So striding, it will be, you know, like big steps, big steps. She doesn't give, you know, big steps. But as a main thing, she doesn't walk slowly. She just walks, you know, like normal. That's it. Nothing special, nothing rememorable. It is just the thing that he's trying to tell us. So let's just continue. And it says also here, there was no need to affect intellectual leanings in order to win her over or to worry that she may be comparing me to the printing men who post in fashion catalogs. So printing key will be acicalados. That means that they are clean, they look good, they are handsome, and that's it. And it says also, and she didn't get work up if I happened to be late for one of our meetings. So she said like, she doesn't get mad. She doesn't like yell at him. She just like, okay. And also like, he doesn't want, he doesn't need to worry about her like cheating on him because she's not interested in that it says the pouch that started appearing in my my 20s the pouch it will be the belly you know the food to baby or you know when you drink a lot of beer you start having like a belly that is the pouch and well it says my skin and legs and forearms and steadfastly refuse to bulk up in spite of my best efforts you know to bulk up the muscles um, it says the inferiority complex I used to have about the size of my penis. I could reassure that I wouldn't have to fret about such things on her account. So fret, it will be worry. He doesn't have to worry about anything, you know, like probably they love each other or they accept each other and that's it. You know, she is not interested in cheating on anything, anybody else. That's it. So uh, let's just continue, and then we have a phrase that is run of the mill woman. And run of the mill, it will be uh, like nothing special, común y corriente. So it says, and so it was only natural that I would marry the most run of the mill woman in the world, común y corriente. Because in this, in this part, the guy is saying that if he, you know, like were married with a pretty or with a beautiful woman or with a rich woman, his life wouldn't be so peaceful. So that's why in his plans were just to, to marry a run-of-the-mill woman. That's it. Then it says, as for women who were pretty intelligent, stringly, stringly, it will be sorprendentemente sensual. You know, it is he describing the daughters of rich families they would only have served to disrupt my carefully ordered existence. So he will be stressed all the time. He just trying to say that. Then continue with this, we have another word in this page that he says, in keeping with my expectations, she made for a completely ordinary wife who went about things without any distasteful frivolousness. So distasteful, it would be desagradable. So she wasn't doing anything in order to, you know, like getting her man. That's it. Mm, continue with vocabulary. We have, well, he mentioned that he is working, you know, like I think I, in this part, she is uh, working. Oh yeah, in this part, it says, by a comic publisher. So she was hired by a comic publisher in order just to, um, to grab the dialogues in the bubbles, in the speech bubbles. Now the speech bubble, it will be the bubble when you grind, you know, the dialogue. So it is describing, you know, here the part-time job she has. And also the, he says like, she was a woman of few words. It was rare for her to demand anything of me. And however late I was in getting home, she never took it upon herself to kick up a fuss. A fuss, it will be, you know, un alboroto. So she was never, never um, upset about it. If she arrived late, okay. If she arrived early, okay. If she's not at home, no problem at all. If whatever, you know, she was very calm and peaceful. 
Then it says, when idle, when idle, the afternoon away. Idle, it is a verb that it means uh, when you, when you have free time and you don't do anything about it. Oh, I mean, you don't have any hobby. You are just, you know, like spending time doing nothing. That is idle. That will be tiempo muerto. You know, like um, periodo de inactividad. So he says, I idle the afternoon away. So I was doing anything in the afternoon, you know, probably just watching TV and that was it. So he it is just saying this. And he says here that whenever he was at home, she usually was at her room reading. So there was, you know, like there was no need to have a conversation. They could just be in silence and that's it. Then we continue with vocabulary and then it says for some unfathomable reason. Unfathomable reason, it will be inconmensurable. Oh yeah, because he says here that the only hobby she has is reading books. That's it. But not any book like novels or romantic. No, he says that the books look dull. If you don't know what is dull, dull it would be like boring. Like nothing special, you know, like opaco. So I'm pretty sure it's just uh, that kind of books that most of us, we don't like reading like novels or like classics or stuff like that. So continue with vocabulary. We have almost at the end of this page, it says, so if not, was it laziness or just a sheer lack of concern? So sheer, it will be puro, you know? It was just uh, la una pura, la, el pur, la pura falta de, de, de preocupación, you know, that's a concern. So they are here, what they are talking about? Oh, yeah, because they are talking here, they are mentioning about the breath. It says, the only, re the only respect in which my wife was at all unusual was that she didn't like wearing a breath. When I was a young man, barely out of adolescence, and my wife and I were dating, I happened to put my hand on her back only to find that I couldn't feel a brass strap under her sweater. And when I realized what this meant, I became quite aroused. So aroused is when you are, well, excited. We said it when we are, you know, like, oh yeah, let's, let's you know, like, let's go to the party and you are excited, you are eager, you know, to attend. When you mention arousal, the arose it's when you are like sexual awakened when you are start having this feeling that you want to have sex that's it you know you're in the mood and well the he just explained that she doesn't like wearing brass and it says here you know the outcome of my studies was that she wasn't in fact trying to send any kind of signal oh yeah because when they are knowing, you know, each other, he mentioned that, for example, this fact, she is not wearing a bra. And he started thinking like, what if she wants to tell me something and I'm not understanding? Or why if she is asking me for something and I don't get it? So at the end of the day, she, I mean, he just realized that that was normal for her. She wasn't trying to, to tell him anything. That's it. So let's just continue. And then it says, no bra look. I would have preferred her to go around wearing one of the oh sorry. I will have preferred her to go around wearing one of that thickly padded so that I could save my face in front of my acquaintances. So padded it will be the path that the path it is something you know like una gasa, or in this case it will be something acolchonado, something that is you know like fluffy, relleno, yeah. And it says here that uh, sometimes he he felt embarrassed in front of his known acquaintances, conocidos, because she is not wearing a bra. That's it. So continue with vocabulary. We have another one that is lecturing. Lecturing, lecturing it is lectura, yes. But in this case, in this context, it will be more like giving a speech, you know, like un sermón, like regañar. So here you're just saying that, you know, uh, but she wasn't remotely concerned. I tried to reproach her, lecturing her to layer up with a vest instead of a bra in that sultry heat. Sultry, it could be like seductor. 
But in this context, it will be more like bochornoso, you know, because it is is the husband saying the wife like, hey, you should wear a bra. So for him, it is a little bit sultry. And let's just continue. And at the end, we have this weariness and boredom. So it says, we were approaching the five-year mark. And since we were never madly in love to begin with, we were able to avoid falling into that stage of weariness and boredom. So weariness, it will be Ken Sensio. So he, the, the husband is trying to say that he were... Uh, he were never so lovely with each other, you know, like, oh, baby, or honey, or stuff, you know, like, very romantic. So that's why they continue being the same all his, uh, all their marriage. So that's it. Continue with vocabulary we have here. I have never considered the possibility that our life together may, might undergo such an app appealing change. So appealing, it will be terrible. So, you know, it says here, let me just, until I certain day left when I came across my wife standing in the kitchen and they break in just her nightclothes. Oh, yeah. Because here is describing again, well, it is not describing again. He's describing the very first time the his wife is, you know, like acting weird. So he says that, you know, uh, he is telling us about his relationship that that he wishes you know to have a kid because it's as like a baby or like someone who call him dada but then you know like nothing happens that's it they are okay because they decided not to have kids until they have their own place and that happened not so long ago but nothing else has happened after that and then he mentioned that, you know, one day something changed. That's when he says appealing. So appealing kid is terrible. And here is just the dialogue. As you may see here, the dialogues are marked with um, with um, just one second. On there, Stefan. Hyphen. Yeah, with a hyphen. So here you have, you know, the dialogue. It says, what are you doing standing there? I've been about to switch on the bedroom light when I was broke up short. It was around four in the morning. And I had woken up with a ragging thirst. Ragging, well, it comes from rage. So he is like, he was very thirsty, you know, like very, very thirsty. So that's it. I just describing that. And, you know, when he arrives at the kitchen, he saw his wife, he's trying to call her, but she is not responding or anything. So it says, any lingering alcohol-induced drowsiness St swiftly pass. So swiftly, rapidamente. Oh, lingering alcohol-induced drowsiness. Drowsiness, it will be like, you know, you are a little bit dizzy or stuff like that. And it says that instantly, you know, that pass. Why? Because he saw his wife that she was acting weird. And probably he got scared at the time. So, you know, like he's, um, his drowsiness just finished. Swiftly pass. Swiftly, you know, like quickly pass. And then we have here, her face was submerged in the darkness. So I couldn't make out her expression, but the potential options all fill me with fear. Her thick, naturally black hair was fluffed up Dish, dish bell. So dish bell, it will be desalinado. So probably, you know, like, well, she was sleeping probably. And you know that when you're sleeping, you just have, you know, your hair, your hair is a mess. Then it says here, how long may she have been standing there like that? Barefoot, remember, with no shoes in that uh, thing, summer nightwear. Ramrod straight as thought. Ramrod means baqueta. So in this case, I'm thinking, you know, that she, I mean, he's talking about her position. She's very straight. So that's it. She's not moving. She's straight. She, her, her, her hair is a mess. And, you know, she is just looking at the fridge. She's not moving. So I think here he is describing that. Continue with vocabulary, we have gleam. 
and gleam, you know, that is brillar. But here is describing that. But what could there be to absorb her attention in that pale gleam on the fridge or white door? So pitch black kitchen at four in the morning. Oh, yeah, because, you know, she's just staring at the fridge. She's not moving. So that's it. So continue with this. We have hovering around 14 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So it says, I turned on the bathroom light and went in. The cold snap had continued for several days now, consistently hovering around. So hovering, it will be rondar, like around. That's why it says around. So, rondando entre los 14 grados Fahrenheit. So, that's it, hovering. And, well, it doesn't say anything here. Not here, but it says here. For the few moments immediately after I opened my eyes, the next morning when reality had yet to assume its usual concreteness, I lay with the quilt wrap about me. Quilt, it will be the, the blanket, you know? We have the blanket that it will be like not a very thin, you know, like una cobija, but a quilt, it will be un edredon. So, you know, he is with the quilt around him, his wrap, envuelto. So let's just move. And then he said, she was crouching, still wearing her nightclubs. Crouching, it will be de cuclillas. And then it says, you know, he's talking about her hair again. This bell, tangle hair. Tangle, remember that it is enredado. So her hair is a mess. That's it. And it says also, I, oh yeah, here is describing that the girl is, you know, like, putting everything outside the fridge. So she says something like, um, just one second, it says, around her, the kitchen floor was covered with plastic bags and airtight containers scattered all over so that there was nowhere I could put my feet without treading on them. Before shabu shabu, or if you don't know what is shabu shabu, shabu shabu, it's a Korean dish. And includes meat. So it says belly pork, two sides of black beef shin. And shin, it will be espinilla. Some squid in a vacuum packed bag. You know that squid, it will be calamar. And um, slight eel that my mother-in-law had sent us from the countryside ages ago. So eel, remember that is this long animal that looks like a snake. And it says dry crocker. And a crocker, it's um it's a fish. It's a fish that is corvina. I don't know, guys. Uh, but this is a kind of fish. So tied with yellow string on open packs of frozen dumplings and endless bundles of unidentified stuff dragged from the depths of the fridge. So bundles, bundles, it will be bultos, paquetes. So just imagine this scene. The guy enters to his kitchen and he sees that, you know, his wife is putting everything in, in black trash uh, bags and they are just, you know, like around the kitchen, all over the place. It says there was a rustling sound. My wife was very busy putting the thing, so... Rustling susurro. Um, by into black rubbish bags. Eventually, I lost control. What the hell are you up to now? So she kept on putting the parcel. Parcels. It will be according to the context. You know, it has different meanings, but here it will be paquetes. It will be you know the bags. That's it. Into the rubbish bag, seemingly to no more aware of my existence. She had been last night. Beef and pork pieces of chicken, at least 2,001 worth of salt, salt water eel. Salt water, it will be agua salada. And eel, remember that is an onion. So he's describing that. It's a really nice meat. And well, he says, have you lost your mind? Why on earth are you throwing all this stuff out? And then he says here, I hurriedly stumbled my way through the plastic bags and grabbed her her grace, trying to free the bags from her grip. 
So pre, it will be, you know, to see what is inside. And, you know, he, he grabbed her by the wrist. So it's like, what do you have there? Let me see. Okay. So then it says, stone to find her fiercely tugging back. So tugging, it will be, you know, like trying to, to pull, you know, tirones. So I almost falter for a moment. So falter, it will be flaquear, titubear. Because remember that all, all this situation is new for him. Since his wife, he's just very normal. She's just acting super weird, according to him. So I almost falter, you know, like titubear. But my outreach soon gave me the strength to overpower her. So outreach, it will be indignation because he doesn't know what is happening. So at the end, the only thing she said is just, I have a dream. That's it. And well, here, you know, he says that he is just getting a little bit stressed. And I started to fumble through the pockets of my coat because uh, his phone rang. So fumble, it will be dejar caer. Uh, you know, he is looking for his phone. And then it says, finally, in the last inside pocket, my fingers close around my recalcitrant phone. Recalcitrant, it will be renuente. And he's explaining something to someone in his office, like, I'm sorry, yes, I will go. Yeah, yeah, this and that. So it says, oh, yeah. And the guy says, like, why you know like didn't you wake me up like did you iron my my shirt like he's asking her like a lot of questions but she doesn't say anything so it says there was no answer i splash water on myself and rummage in the laundry basket so rummage is just you know like looking for something revolver rebuscar you know he's looking for his his clothes then it says luckily it wasn't to crease crease it is with wrinkles so, arrugado, okay? And let's just continue. Here it says, oh, well, it says, not once did my wife bother to peer out from the kitchen. Peer, remember that it is, you know, like, like, dar un vista, so like, what is happening, okay? So, out of the kitchen in the time it took me to get ready. And then it says, sliding my tie around my neck, like a scarf. So imagine that he is in a rush and in order to put uh, his tie in a place, he just, you know, he just have it um, like around his neck. He's hanging like un pendulo, like something that is moving. So sliding means um, que cuelga, you know, the suspension, the pendulo, just que cuelga. Then it says, um, well, it says, I crime. I cram my feet into my recently purchased shoes. Cram, cram is repleto. So here it just like, like Cinderella sister, you know, he's trying to put his shoes and his shoes, as you may see here, they are a little bit uh, smaller. So, well, that's why he says cram. Then here we said, I checked whether the elevator was going to go all the way up to the floor and then dash. Remember the dash? It's quickly, you know, like run down three flights of stairs. Flights, flights, we know there is, you know, an airport flight and my flight and this, but in this case, flights, it will be tramos. So here it's just saying that he dashed down three flights of stairs. El corrió super rápido o el bajó super rápido tres tramos de escaleras. And well, we have here, I ran my fingers through my hair, did up my tie and attempt to smooth out of the creases in my shirt. Creases, remember, you know, las arrugas. Because he is explaining that he arrives to the, to the train. And once he's in the train, like he has finally some minutes in order to put everything in its place. So he's thinking about his wife and stuff like that. And it says the dark tunnel, her face fleeted by. So fleeted, it will be revolotear. He's, he, you know, he's thinking about her. Then, however, as I have 30 minutes in which to concoct an excuse. Concoct, it will be like make up. He's thinking about the story because he's arriving late. 
he mentioned that he has a client, so he needs to say something to the client. So he is like making up a story. Then here it says, um, today's meeting, there was no time for mulling over the strange behavior of my even stranger wife. So mulling, it will be reflexionar. So he's just trying to tell us that he doesn't have time for thinking about his wife. That's it. So he's not worried about it. Then here, it says here, again, do we have another word? That it says, and steal myself for a confront confrontation. So here, it says, having said that, I told myself that somehow or other, I had to leave the office early today and steal myself for a confrontation. So steal, steal, we know that it is from, you know, metal and, you know, this acero and whatever, but here it just, you know, to put everything in place, you know, to be sure what he wants to say. And that's it. Okay. And then here we have the description of the dream that the girl is having. It says, there are goods, no people, the sharp pointed leaves on the trees, my torn feet, torn, torn, it is desgarrados, destrozados. Okay. Then it says, this place almost remember, but I'm lost now, frightened, cold, across the frozen ravine. The ravine it will be El Barranco, La Barranca, a red barn-like building. A red barn, barn, it will be Un Granero. So a red barn-like building, Un Granero Rojo, o Un Edificio Tipo Granero, que es rojo, you know? So it says... Um, Oh yeah, that she 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 mentioned that you know her feet are torn, so she's limping. What is limping? Coger. And that finally she is inside, and then it says it's inside. So it's inside. It mentioned like dentro de algo. What we don't know what. And er, well, it says that everything you know, it is uh, a long bamboo stick strong, with great blood red gashes of meat. So first of all, strong, it will be colgado. So there's a lot of meat, you know, like hanging. And it says gashes of meat. The gash, it will be cortes, tajos. So there's a lot of meat, like probably like a, a butchery. Not a butchery, but the place, you know, where the cows and, um, well, yeah, where cows are killed. No, then suddenly they are they have we have a lot of meat hanging out hanging from the from the ceiling. I think it is a place like this one. And well it says that everything it's blood, you know, dripping blood. And she's trying, you know, to pass through the meat, but she couldn't. Then it says that everywhere there's blood, blood everywhere, her clothes, her mouth, everything. And she says that finally, you know, she could go outside. And it says, family picnicking, little children running about, and that smell, that delicious smell, almost painfully vivid. The babbling stream, the babbling, babbling means uh, balbuceo. So, you know, there's a lot of people talking. Spraying out rush mats to sit on and snacking on kimbap. Kimbap, it is also a Korean dish. I'm not sure it is like a taco or something, but it's a dish. And it says barbecuing meat, the sound of singing and happy lover. Uh, so everybody's happy. And she said that, you know, the smell she recognized, it just meat. But the fear, my clothes still wet with blow, high, high behind the trees. Crouch down, remember that crouch, it is en cuclilla, so agacharse. Don't let anybody see. My bloody hands, my bloody mouth, uh, mouth in that barn, what had I done? Push uh, that red raw mass into my mouth. Oh yeah, it's just, you know, like she, she ate. What uh, did she eat? It says... A red raw mass. So red raw mass, una masa cruda, una masa roja cruda. Uh, fell is squish against my gums. Gums, it would be las encías. The roof of my mouth, it would be el paladar. And slick with crimson blood. Slick, it will be resbaloso. 
with crimson blood, crimson, it will be carmesí. So we con sangre color carmesí. Then it says chewing on something that felt so real but couldn't have been, it couldn't. My face, the look in my eyes, my face, I'm duckly, but never seen before. Or not, not mine, but so familiar. Nothing makes sense. Familiar and yet not. Then vivid, strange, horrible, uncanny feeling. Uncanny, it is just that it is scary, misterioso. Um, then it says, on the dining table, my wife had laid out lotus, soybean paste, and a seaweed soup. Seaweed, it would be algas. If you don't know it, without the usual beef of clams, clams, those are the uh, ostras and kimchi. Kimchi, as I mentioned it before, it is like a spicy sauce where they combine these uh, spicy condiments with, um, it is not lettuce, but it seems to be lettuce and they eat it. Then it says, uh, oh yeah, in this scene, you know, the husband arrives from his office, remember that a little bit early in order to confront his wife. And it says on the dinner table, my wife had laid out lettuce and soybean paste. And it says, what the hell? So all because of some ridiculous dream, you've gone and chucked out all the meat worth how much? So chuck, it will be like desechar, tirar. And worth how much? Cuánto valían? Cuánto costaban? You know? Then it says, I got up from my chair and opened the freezer. It was practically empty. Nothing but miso powder, chili powder, frozen fresh chilies, and a pack of minced garlic. Minced, in this case, it will be uh, machacado, you know, like in trocitos, picado, molido. And it says, like, well, you know, like, cook me some eggs. And she's like, I also threw away the eggs. Because sex, you know, they are come from an animal. And well, here, you know, it is describing this. And then we have, you know, like another word almost at the end of this page that it says, oh, good. So that's me sorted then. Sorted, it will be ordenado, clasificado. And I think here they are discussing or, you know, uh, the husband is asking her, like, so why you decided to eat meat and how long this will, you know, like, last? Uh, she said, like, forever. So that's it. And, well, here we have another word. It says, as far as I was concerned, the only reasonable grounds for altering one's eating habit were the desire to lose weight. So grounds, well, ground, we know that is ground, you know, el piso, but here grounds it will be the reason behind, you know, el motivo. Then it says an attempt to alleviate certain physical ailments. So alleviate, aliviar, and ailments, it will be enfermedades. Then here again, we have shear that remember that is puro. And it says in another case, it was nothing but sheer abstinency for a wife to go against her husband wishes as mine had done. So el la pura... Um, just one second. Obstinate. So, you know, it was una obstinación pura. Yeah, that's it. Then he said, if you said that my wife had always been faintly nauseated, faintly, ligeramente, and nauseated, it would be nauseabundo by meat. Oh, because, you know, he says like, well, I understand that if you smell, you know, meat and you start having these nauseous, well, it is okay to stop eating meat, but you don't have anything. So it is just describing here, I guess. Then it says tongs. Tongs in one hand and a large pair of scissors in the other. Tongs, it will be, you know, las pinzas, las tenazas. And it says here, and she flip rip meat in a sizzling pan while snipping into a bite-sized pieces. So here, tongs, remember, you know, it will be the... Um, Oh, just one second, I'm sorry. So here it will be the uh, the pinzas, and it is describing, you know, that she flip, you know, le da la vuelta, watch, the rip meat. And then we have sizzling. If you haven't heard this sizzling, sizzling is the sound that meat is making when you are cooking it. You know, this 
that is the selling. And then it says while snipping, snipping it will be recortar, you know, like tro, you know, trozar into bite size. So bite size del tamaño de una mordida. Her movements deft and practice. Deft habiles. So she knew how to how to you know like chop meat. Her fragrant caramelized deep fried belly pork was achieved by marinating the meat in minced ginger. Remember that means is you know like uh, molido. And glutinous starch. Starch will be almidon. So syrup. Then we have here um, syrup. Just one second. So her signature dish had been wafer thin slices of beef. Wafer? Wafer it will be this um, the count, you know, the wafer, el barquillo, but here it's just telling us or describing that the meat, the pieces of the slices of meat, they are very thin. They look like, you know, obleas, very thin, very thin. So that's it. It just, you know, like wafer thin slices of beef, season it with black pepper and sesame oil, then cover it with sticky rice powder. Cover it, it will be recubiertos. And it says, and the brown shabu shabu broth. Oh, yeah. So here is the broth, and the broth, it will be el consomme, the soup, you know, el caldito. And shabu shabu and bibimbap, those are Korean dishes that she knew how to prepare them. And according to her, her husband, they were very delicious. So it says, she had made bibimbap with bean sprouts. Bean sprouts, those are, well, sprouts are brotes. So bean sprouts are like, you know, bean sprouts. Like, I don't remember the name, but just one second. As I was telling you, this uh, bean sprout, a sprout, it will be this word that I told you that then brotes, but bean sprout, those are uh, germen de trio. That, that was the word. Then we have here and prepare soaked rice stir fried stir. It is remover. So in this case, I think that she just you know like put it, move it a little bit, and just take it out. Okay. And then we have mussels. Uh, well, the mussels are mejillones. Yeah, the mussels. And here we have again. I could happily polish off three helpings in a single sitting. So polish off, it will be like clean the dish. And then three helpings. Helpings, like helping? No. Helpings, in this case, it will be la ración, the portions. So she could eat three portions in a sitting, you know, en una sentada. Then here we have another word that is steadfastly. And steadfastly, it will be firmemente. So it says here, not eating, she asks absent-mindedly for all the world like some middle-aged woman addressing her grown-up son. I sat in silence, steadily, I'm sorry, steadfastly uninterested in this poor excuse for a meal, crunching on kimchi for what felt like an age. So here it is just, you know, remember that this is the scene where he arrived from his job and he's trying to confirm his uh, wife he is hungry but she just prepared like seaweed soup which is just a um, sopa de algas with kimchi that kimchi i told you is like a sauce so he's just you know like there's nothing else and um, that's it you know then here then he said spring came so like time passes by. We don't know how long, but that time has, you know, like passed by. And it says spring came and still my wife haven't backed down. So she's still, you know, like doesn't want to eat meat. Then we continue. And then we have a word here that is no, it had to be that dream she has mentioned that was bound to be at the bottom of, of it all. So bound, it will be like sujeto. In, I mean, bound, it means several things according to the context. For example, obligado, sujeto, limitado. But in this case, you know, like everything has to be with that dream. So the, the situation is bound to the dream. Bound, you know, está 
sujeto. It has to be. So, no one could describe my wife as especially attentive. So, attentive, it will be atenta, you know. She's clueless. <laughs> That's it. And let's continue on here. It says, how guard. And how guard, oh, because it says here, she didn't come to bed until around five in the morning. And even then, I couldn't say for sure whether she actually spent the next hour asleep or not. Her face had guard and her hair tangled. She will observe me over the breakfast table through red narrow eyes. So he says here that time, you know, like has passed by. She still continues not eating meat. So her feature, her face, everything, you know, like it changing. For example, in, in this case, it says her face had guard. It would be the macrada. So she's looking, you know, sick. Here we have again this false. That remember that false, it will be like un alboroto. And continuing with vocabulary, we have here another two words that it says, now and then, all of this struck me as being not so much ridiculous as faintly ominous. So faintly, it will be, just one second. Oh, uh, ligeramente. And ominous, it will be the malagüero, inquietante. So now and then, all of this struck me as not so much reckless, faintly ominous. So he is not trying to think uh, like the situation is bad. You know, he's trying to be positive. That's it. He feels that um, there's no need to worry. Then we have some vocabulary here. As you may see, there are some parts when he's describing and there are so many words that probably we don't know together, but then everything, you know, like, uh, it's okay. <laughs> In this case, we have four words. It says, it was only when she hadn't been able to sleep when the hollows in her face, hollows, it would be hoyos. So, you know, los huecos. In her face were even more pronounced than usual. A stop. She had deflated from within, and in the morning I will ask what the mother was, only to hear I had a dream. I never inquire as to the nature of his this of this dream. So inquire will be like investigado, like he never worried about it, you know. It was like, okay, it's a dream. I had already had listened once to that crazy spill. The spill it will be the discurso about the barn in the dark woods. So barn, remember, there is un granero. The face reflected in the pool of blood and all the rest of it. And once had been more than enough. So here again, we have another word that it says so meal. So I tried to reassure myself by running through what I knew of her family. Her father worked at the so meal. So meal, it will be el aserradero. And then it says here, so at that, so at the very least, there didn't seem to be any strain of metal abnormality lurking in my wife's bloodline. So lurking, it will be escondido, al acecho. So he just trying, you know, to research a little bit about his wife, um, health by you know like recalling his parents and just you know her parents sorry just to see if they are sick he says that there's no problem there then it says um well here it says enjoy you you a kind of beef tartar tartar it will be tartaro you know carne tartara i had seen my mother-in-law got a live fish got it will be like destripar and my wife and her sister were both perfectly competent when it came to hacking a chicken into pieces with the butcher's clever. So hacking, I know that, you know, a computer can be hacked. So, you know, like piratear or, you know, something like that. But in this case, hacking, it will be like chopping, cutting in pieces. And uh, clever, it will be like the butcher's uh, knife. Un cuchillo de carnicero. Continue with here, you know, we have a different kind of font that announces that it will be the description of another dream. So it says here, the morning before I had the dream, I was mincing frozen meat 
So, you know, mincing mol eh, en trocitos, you know, like molito. And uh, it says, damage, what the hell are you doing screaming like that? So, screaming, retorcerse. You have never been squeamish before. Squeamish, melindroso. So, it says, if you knew how hard I've always worked to keep my nerves in check, other people just get a bit flustered, but for me, everything gets confused. Spits off, weak, weaker. The hand holding the knife was working so quickly, I felt heat prickle the back of my neck. Prickle, it will be comezón. You know, like something, it is like, like, you know, producing her to, to scratch her neck. And it says my hand, the chopping board, the meat, and then the knife slicing coal into my finger. She caught her finger. And, well, you know, it is describing this not very weird dream, but she says, you know, like she caught her finger and then that um, like her husband is eating. And he found like a piece of uh, a knife. It says here, what the hell is this? You yell a chip off the knife, a chip off, un pedazo que se cayó. And it says that, you know, what would have happened if he, you know, like just uh, have eaten the, 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 the piece of metal. So here we have another word that it says, ebbing tight. So ebbing means menguar. And it says, suddenly everything around me began to slide away as though pulled back on an ebbing tide. Ebbing, you know, as I commented to you, menguar and tight, it will be la marea. So um, just in order not, you know, to, to stay a, 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 a lot of time reading and this, I will just start, you know, with the, the meaning of the, the last words. So here it says, she gently shrug off my hand, opened her compact and patted the powder puff over her face. Oh, in this in this scene, it is as I commented to you when the guy uh aware when they are just going sorry, when they are just about to go to the restaurant with the husband boss, and he is just telling her, like, hey, in this case is like what is happening with your lips? Because he says that, you know, she doesn't look as pretty or she doesn't look like if she were if she were wearing makeup. So he's like, do your makeup again. It says her compact and patted, patted the powder. So patted, it would be, you know, like a cardiciar, you know, like, like this. And then it says the rich coral lipstick she always used to wear and without which her lips were ashen. Ashen. Cenizos. And well, here we have her sickly pallor. Pallor it will be la palidez. We are late, and then she fumbled with her dark blue sneakers. Fumble, it will be tocar. Um, oh, because you know, he is mentioning here that she just threw away all her shoes because they were made uh, out of leather. So it says trench. Uh, they didn't go with her blank trench coat. So trench, you know, it will be just like a, um, it, it is just, you know, a trench coat. It is like a very long coat. So it will be una gabardina. And trench just, uh, you know, like that. Trench means una zanja, trinchera, un hoyo. So. And here it says, uh, my wife has spent a minute fussing with her coat, you know, like dealing, fighting with her coat, and finally managed to fasten her seat belt. So fasten, it will be just, you know, to, to, one second. Fasten means abrochar, yeah, you know, that is it, the word I was looking for. And well, here they are going towards the restaurant. It says the two-story building. Two-story building, in this case, story will be pisos. And, you know, continue. It says, being expected to be demure and restrained. Demure, it will be recatado. Then my boss, wife, an imposing woman with finally pluck eyebrows. Pluck, it will be desplomados. You know? 
So in this case, maybe she has like very or some hairs or stuff like that. So lavish meal. Lavish, it will be lujoso. Because remember that it is a boss. They you know it's a restaurant. They are eating. So it's lavish, luxury. Then it says gop. It took my seat, careful not to be seen, to gop and the ornate ceiling. So gop, it will be like, you know, when you have your mouth open because you are impressed by whatever you have in front. Then it says at the eaves of a traditional building. So eaves, it will be los aleros. To be honest, I don't know so much about architecture. So here they are talking about the building. Then we have, she was wearing a slightly cleaning black blouse. So clean jean, clean jean, it will be pegado. And here it is just, you know, mentioning that her wife is not wearing a bra. So everybody could, could see her nipples, it says. And to my other mortification, so other it will be absoluto. I saw that the outline of her nipples were was clearly visible through the fabric. Remember that fabric, it will be la tela. Without a doubt, she had come out without a bra. When the other guests surreptitiously crammed, so surrepti, just one second, surreptitiously, so surreptitiously clandestinamente, you know, like they don't want to see, but they are just, you know, like seeing. And it says cram their necks. So cram their necks, it will be like estiral, like they are moving like this, but they are trying, you know, to pay attention to the neckline of, um, of the girl. Then it says here, feigning. Feigning, it will be fingir. Feigning composure. I registered the curiosity and astonishment and contempt that they were revealed in turn in her eyes. So then you have here with the pleasantries. Pleasantries, it is like halagos, you know, we could be chistes, completos. So they are just um, probably like, oh, you look good and that kind of, you know, stuff. So here it says that were that there was nothing on toward. On toward means adverso. Did you have any problem finding the place? Oh, they are having a conversation and it says, um, okay, um, I see. Yes, the garden has turned out quite well, hasn't it? You ought to try coming in the daytime. So you ought to try coming. Ought is exactly the same thing as should. You know, you should come. It's just that ought is a little bit more formal than should. So that's why, you know, remember that this, uh, the wife, the boss wife, talking with an employee. So the facade, the facade will be la fachada. Continue with this, we have here the ladling. So the waiter was at the point of ladling some onto her plate. So ladling, servir con un cucharón. Ah, uh, when she said like, I won't eat it. And then it says emaci emaciated body. So one second, it says. She had spoken very quietly, but the other guests all instantly stopped what they were doing, directing glances, you know, like to see, uh, of surprise and wonder and her emaciated body. Emaciated, she will be the macrado, because remember that she looks really, really thin and she looks sick. And well, they, they you know, talk about this vegetarian, being vegetarian and said the waiter whisk nine plates away. So whisk, it will be mezclar. No se llevó. No, they weren't in the table anymore. Here, there's no vocabulary. Here we have chim. So the executive director's wife, chim in. Chim, it will be repicar, tocar, sonar. And then we have oblivious. Oblivious, it is olvidado. And then we have Oh, yeah, in this case, they are like, oh, can you imagine, you know, like being with a vegetarian? So uh, a vegan person, you know, imagine you were snatching up, snatching, uh, snatching, it will be arrebatar. So snatching up a grilling baby octopus. A grilling is, you know, it's moving, it's alive. 
So, que se repentea, que se retuerce. So, snatching, it will be, um, as I commented, you know, like arrebatar or, you know, like trying, you know, to trozar with your chopstick. Chopsticks, it will be los palillos and chomping it to death. Chomping, morder. So here they are describing because remember that Korean people, they like uh, squid and sometimes uh, baby octopus, you know, baby octopi, and they eat them alive. It's quite dangerous, yes, but they eat them alive. So in this case, they are just describing like, can you imagine being a friend of a vegan where you eat, you know, like a baby octopus and you like chomp it, you know, like, I don't know, you know, masticas, lo muerdes. And, well, that's it. Then here we have, my wife sat there immobile while everyone else took in. So, took in, remeter, re, you know, plegar. Her nipples resembling a pair of acorns, acorns, peyotas, as they push against the fabric of her blouse. Her gaze roamed intently. So, roamed, it will be a bagar de ambular. And then we have over the rapidly working mouths of the other guests. Delving, delving, it will be profundizar into every nook and cranny. Nook, rincón, esquina, and cranny as though intently to soak every little detail. Cranny will be una grieta. So, you know, she is just looking at the people, how they eat. She's not saying anything. She's just, you know, like looking at them. Um, and it says, it was clear that they were all uncomfortable. The next dish was fried chicken in a chili and garlic sauce. And after that was a raw tuna. My wife sat there in mobile while everyone else was talk. So, you know, she was just looking at everybody while they are eating. And then we have another word that at the end it says, uh, my wife had eaten nothing but salad and kimchi and a little bit of squash porridge. Squash, remember that it's a vegetable. It's um, it's green. It's long. It is calabaza. And porridge, porridge is just like another dish. To be honest, it looks like it is not a soup. It looks like avena. <laughs> That's it. But you know, in this case, it is not avena. So um, it is a dish. That's the name. Porridge. So, continue with vocabulary, we had boldly, and boldly means sin rodeos. Uh, that stare a pale, everyone, a pale consternar. Grasp, grasp, it says, was it possible that she had not grasped the status? So, grasp, it will be captar. Also means agarrar, but in this case, it is captar. Uh, what shadowy recesses lurk in her mind? Lurk, it will be acechar. Then we have here another one, sloppy. Slop means inclinado, you know, like um, una bajada. So here, sloping car window, it is inclinado. Uh, then we have her voice was laced with worry. Lace, it will be atado. You know, she was worrying. Then here we have after hanging up, I riffle through my notebook. Um, a riffle, it's a riffle, you know, like a weapon. But in this case, riffle, it is to have a notebook and to pause the pages, you know, ojear, volter. And it says uh, that in this scene, he is calling his sister-in-law. That is in his, that's his name. I'm sorry, her name. My ears were assaulted by the sound of her young son bellowing hello. So bellowing, it will be gritar, vociferar. And then, you know, he's explaining the situation to uh, his sister-in-law. Then it says another dream. We have again, you know, the change of font. So we have dreams of murder, murder or murdered. So asesinar o ser asesinado. Hazy distinctions. Hazy, it will be borroso, brumoso, vago. Boundaries wearing thin. Familiarity bleeds into strangeness. Certainty becomes impossible. Only the violence is vivid enough to stick. A sound of the elasticity of the insect when the metal struck the victim's head. So, you know, it is the sound when, you know, like this piece of metal struck, you know, like hit 
the big things here. And it says um, the shadow that crump, crump, crumple. So crumple, it will be arrugado. And then so gleams cold in the darkness. So gleams, it will be brillar. So in this case, it says uh, something like, you know, when someone hits this case and whatever, you know, it says la sombra arrugada y los rayos que los rayos fríos que salen de la oscuridad. I mean, I think here is describing the metal piece. So they come to me now more times that I can count dreams overlaid with dreams, a palimpsest of horror. So here, dreams overlaid with dreams. So it means that tiene sueños dentro de los sueños. And uh, palimpsest, palimpsest means palim palimpsesto. And a palimpsesto, it is a, like a book or like a like a text that has been erased in order to write something on top. So that's why it says here overlaid. So sobrepuestos, okay? And, you know, hazy hints, it means again the same thing, that it will be borroso, brumoso, that you cannot distinguish it. And intolerable, intoler, intolerable, low thing. So here... So here we have um, intolerable low things, so long suppressed, and loading it will be aversion, repugnancia. Then lukewarm, lukewarm it will be tibio. Then we have everything is being snuffed out in the pitch black darkness. So snuff it will be apagar, cortar. Uh, we don't have anything here but the name of the girl. And the name of the girl, it is Yon He. We have it here. No, That's her name. So there you go. And well, here we have another word. Oh, we don't have words here. But here we have, according to my wife, we had to wipe her over the kales until she was 18 years old. So wipe, it will be derrotado, batido. Abatido, sorry. So... Here then do we have um rock. The only thing that had changed was the in the early hours of the morning when I grow for my alarm clock. So grop it will be and that at the end as you know when he is trying to turn off or to snooze um his alarm. It's just that esta at the end as. And then we have the Rambrom. Ramrod straight. Remember that Ramrod it will be la baqueta. So in this case. Maybe they are talking that is very you know, straight. Uh, her eyes gazing upward in darkness. After the meal at the restaurant, other people in the company had been noticeable, cool towards me. But once the project I pushed through began to yield, remember that yield, it will be a rendimiento, you know, to dar frutos. So I'm far from the negligible profits. So negligible, insignificantes. Más allá de uh, ingresos eh, insignificantes. All that unpleasantness appeared to have been entirely forgotten. Oh, yeah, because, you know, after the scene or after, you know, the restaurant's dinner, everybody is a little bit cool towards, you know, the guy because of his wife that she is not, well, she's rude because she doesn't speak too much but also because the way she is behaving. And also remember that uh, she's not wearing a bra and then the the boss wife is asking her some questions and she doesn't say anything back. So that's why. And to, well, guys, as you may see, that is just the very beginning. It is just the ending of these pages. And as you may see, um. As you may see, this is um, this is the very first uh, pages of this book that is called The Vegetarian. It is the story just, you know, like getting to that point that we will see what is happening with this character that is called Yoongi, if I'm not mistaken. And well, 
As I commented to you, the vocabulary in these pages, it is not very difficult, but since he is describing or this character, this author is describing, you know, like some specific things, sometimes vocabulary, it is also very specific. But as I commented to you, um, it is just the beginning. So little by little, you will see that the words continue, you know, like appearing during your reading. So the next chapter is pretty sure they will be easier. So as you may see, this is the end of our first session. I really hope you have been enjoying this book. And well, see you in the next session. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye.